welcome to Impacting Jamaica, where we shine the spotlight on the many but often ignored positive happenings, activities, projects, and investments at every level across every sector to inspire, motivate, and excite people everywhere. What are some of the areas are, are um, areas of concern or the needs that you saw, particularly in Black-owned businesses that led you to start your company? toward, you know, meeting the needs and training the the um the business operators. I think for me in the UK, I was I was um I was I'm a, I'm a project manager. And one of the things I do is manage projects. And I was managing a huge enterprise project. And um it was funded at the time a lot of money, nearly a million, funded by the Learning and Skills Council in the UK and it was covering areas of um, I think Lambeth and Southwark and the Crystal Palace Triangle. And basically, it was um, um, upskilling the small business sector. And uh, we were working in partnership with other agencies, chambers of commerce and all sorts. But my job was to manage the project. And um, I just felt like at the time when I was doing this, um, I just felt like the black business community wasn't benefiting um, sufficiently. And one of, one of the things some of my... Some of the partners in the program would say to me is things like, um, I said that I thought that the small business, people running their small business, like if you're a dressmaker, plumber, joiner, caterer, cake maker, them people, I thought they needed support to write their own business plan. And some of my colleagues who, they don't really come from um, the kind of background I come from, they, they used to work in banking, like maybe on the tellers or whatever. So they're not, I don't, I don't consider them to be business people. I, I consider them people who worked in banks. And so they said to me, oh, no, if you're starting a business, you should be able to write your own business plan. And I'm like, why? Why would a dressmaker know how to write a business plan? Why, why should she need? I can't sew. You know what I mean? I can't join. I can't do plumbing. But I know how to write a business plan. So they should be supported to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, they need to be involved because it's their business. But why should they? Why do you think it's automatic? And they should sit there and struggle to put this thing, this document uh, essentially together which nowadays people don't even too too bother with those complex business plans anymore but back in the day it was seen as you know a necessity which mm. isn't our parents never had none <laughs> mm. do you know what i mean so they had to learn it the hard systems. way they had well there are systems and processes you know you have to understand your cash flow which my, which i think i think in my family a lot of people understood money you know if you understand how your money flows in and out of your business if you understand how to 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 deal with customers, how to manage that relationship with your customers, you know, without customers, you don't have a business at the end of the day. Right. You know? And if you can't manage your money, your business is not going to thrive. You know, and I think those two things are key essentials. Right. So how do you think your programs or your work has helped in terms of, you know, bolstering um, businesses and assisting operators to understand the whole platform of running a business? I think I think my work has been seminal in the fact that one 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 thing I did when I was doing the direct work was to do, identify that women in particular had different needs to men. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all women, but many women, and that that I, I identified that because I run I run a training program in the community for people who want to start their business um, out of a college, and t three I think three women join the course the second term and I'm like eh? I'm like why did you try you know have I done something wrong what did you not understand and they were like and I said to them so I, I didn't want to single them out so I said to the whole group you know who feels they could do with some support around confidence and self-esteem and of course all the women put their hands up and I was like mm. and that makes sense because men will have a goal men are more uh, men are less risk averse Mm -hmm. um the women, women are more risk averse and i think it's because we're, we we care for the children of mostly we care about the heart you know we think about different things so so I, I then incorporated um um areas of soft skills around confidence and self-esteem into my work and it just took off like phenomenally and there are lots of women who I've come, I don't only work with women, but there's lots of women who have come through my program who are still trading, you know, 10 years hence and develop their businesses. And I'm really proud of them. 
What are some of the traits that you think female business owners need to have in order to break through some of these glass ceilings? I don't know. I see, I don't, I don't, I, I don't kind of view it that way because I think women are fine as we are. Mm-hmm. I just think that, um, um, you know, I'd hate to see women aping men because women are women and we are nurturers and we're, we're, we're all, we're all, we're different. And I think our difference is to be celebrated, you know? Um, so I think I think women as we are are um, we tend to be not all of us, but we tend to be um, much more nurturing, much more caring, much more empathetic. Um, you know, in terms of how we work, and those are good good skills to have. You know, we 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 women need to uh, be comfortable with trained vulnerability, especially as leaders because it encourages and supports others. So I think that um, all we need to do is um, maybe have more confidence in our ability and remember that um, our children and our families come first. Thank you for listening to another episode of Impacting Jamaica. If you or anyone you know is involved with projects and activities that excite, motivate and encourage, send us an email to impactingjamaica at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Do join us again for another in the series on Google Podcasts, Audible, Spotify, Podcast Addict, and Stitcher. You can also visit us at impactingjamaica.com.